Hi, my name is Daniel Foley Carter from seo-audits.io and today I'm going to show you a really nifty trick to get a better understanding of pages that are crawled currently not indexed and discovered currently not indexed. So for those of you that don't know, having content that is crawled and not indexed is generally an indicator that that content is a lack of value. Typically, if Google is crawling something, crawling different pages on your site, be it service pages, product pages, articles, or malformed URLs or parameter-driven URLs, sometimes what Google can do is interpret the content at first pass crawl as not being of value or unlikely to be served, at which point it's then put into crawled currently not discovered, or depending on how Google found that content, discovered currently not indexed. So what I'm going to do today is just show you a quick tip on how you can export that data, better filter it, better understand what stuff that you might need to action and stuff that you can ignore. Now, the other thing that's really important to understand is that the data that Google holds on your site isn't always up to date. So we know that Googlebot is very slow. Generally, if there are issues within uh, pages that are not indexed, you'll often find that when you export the sample data, it generally will contain stuff that is no longer valid. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the process. I did put this out on a social media post. Uh, a lot of people saying that um, it was uh, it looked fairly complex. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do it now in the video so that you can easily repeat this for yourself. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go under indexing and we're going to go to pages. And what we're going to look at today is crawled currently not indexed and, um, and discovered currently not indexed. But for the purpose of the video, we're just going to do crawled currently not indexed because it's the same process we've discovered. So we're going to go in and we can see that the trend is slightly, slightly on the upward trajectory. Um, so again, you know, immediately I can already see that these URLs are feed URLs. Um, so it's looking like a majority of these are going to be feed based. We do see that there are some that aren't feed based. So how well this will work on this particular site, I don't know, but you can repeat this on yours irrespective of the data. So the first thing that we're going to do is export to a Google Sheet. So this is for bulkco.co.uk, which is one of my test domains. So we've exported our data into here. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a crawl of our site. Now, various different crawl tools will have various different outputs after a crawl. Typically, any tool that will output um, with internal link counts, um, word counts, HTTP status, anything like that is generally going to be good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to now crawl our domain. bulkco.co.uk we're just going to call that okay so what we're going to do is let that crawl and we're going to go to our table <coughs> and we have our list of URLs here now the first thing that we're going to want to do is we'll just freeze our top row. And we're not really too bothered about when this was last crawled, so we're going to delete that. Now, before we go any further, when we use Google Apps scripts, you need to make sure that the Chrome profile that you're signed into is the same as the um, account where you're actually signed in on your Google account. Um, otherwise, you may have problems running the script. Now, for the purpose of saving time, what I'm going to do is just show you a sheet that's already got the script populated. Okay. So, effectively, imagine that this is still your sheet. What you're going to do is you're going to go into Extensions, App Scripts, and Wherever this video is posted, I would have done a post and I would have put 
an app script called HTTP status code, which you'll see here. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to call this HTTP status and you'll just paste this. Don't worry about any of this stuff down here. Um, you're going to paste this. Okay, and then you're going to save it so that it's there ready to execute. Then what we're going to do, pretending that this is all happening in one sheet, is with your URLs, you're then going to use e equals HTTP status code, and then you're going to select the adjacent URL. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just drag this all the way down to let that run. Okay, so all we're looking to do here is just get our HTTP status code. So we need to let that run. And it can take a minute. And we'll just check on our crawl. So our crawl has finished. While we're waiting for HTTP status to run, we're just going to export our crawl. Um, I do apologize. Uh, before you export, make sure you select internal HTML and then export. Just so that you don't end up with loads of uh, auxiliary URLs. So internal HTML and then export it. Then what we're going to do is we'll open it. So we've opened our crawl in CSV and we're simply going to select Control and A to copy it all. And then in another tab, we're going to call this full site crawl. And we're going to paste all of the, the crawl into here. Okay. Now, when you do your export from Screaming Frog, it's very likely that the column orders will be different to mine, and that's because in Screaming Frog, in Screaming Frog, you can actually drag the column across to wherever you want. So however you order your columns in Screaming Frog will typically be how you're going to um, export, okay? Um, so effectively, we've got our crawl here, and what we're going to use is VLOOKUP so that we can match our URLs against any of the pre-existing crawl data. So if we now go back to our table, and we'll just call this URLs for the sake of it. Right, so our HTTP status codes have now finished running. So I'm just going to select the column Control and C. Now again, you would just literally run the script in here rather than doing what I'm doing where I'm having to run it in a separate one. And that's only because Google Apps Script doesn't seem to work on my account very well. So um, I'm using a different sheet on a different account. But effectively, you would run this in the same sheet that you're working on. So you wouldn't have to copy and paste this in. Okay. So we now know the, the HTTP status of the URLs that we're looking at. And this is important because generally you'll find that Google can list URLs that are HTTP 404, um, 401. You can see lots of different status codes generally pop up. So the next thing that we want to understand is are these, are these pages actually linked internally? So what we're going to do, we're just going to create a column called internal links. Now, what needs to happen, and I'm going to explain the VLOOKUP, so I'm just going to open uh, a VLOOKUP. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to use VLOOKUP, so it's going to look for cell A2, which is the URL. It's going to look in the sheet full site crawl, 
which is this sheet, which is why we've named it that. It's going to look across the sheet range from A1 to ZZ. Um, it, this can be any value as long as this value is larger than the volume of URLs in your crawl. So that's important to know. If you've got 20,000 URLs, then you'll want to make sure that that's set to 20,000. If you've got 50,000 URLs, 50,000 and vice versa. <coughs> and the number here, so the number here is indicative of the column number where that is found, okay? So if you look here, it says column number 37, okay? Now, if you look, we're looking for internal links. So we only need to set this number to match whatever the column number is of where our internal links are. Now, in the social post that I put this in, um, what I did was tell you to drag the columns across, but technically, if, if, if you know how to look up your column, which is very easy, so um, I haven't done the drag across on here yet, but we're gonna look for unique in links, which is this column, okay? Now, to find the column number, all you simply do is just drag all the way across the top and you'll see in the bottom corner that it says it's the 38th column across. So you can either drag the column, you can either drag the column across or you can just update the reference. So in this instance, I'm just gonna update the reference to column 38. And if there is a match, it will pull the volume of internal links. Okay, so we're gonna then double click that, centralize it. And we can see here that one of the URLs has nine internal links. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at how much content is on these URLs. Is there actually any text content? So it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be VLOOKUP, what column number is it? So in this one, it is column number two. <coughs> so I'm going to go to here and I'm going to select column number two. And again, I'm going to drop this all the way down. Now, generally, if there's no internal links, it's very likely that there's no content. But we can see here where there is internal links, there is content. And I did say that this was likely not a great site to use because a lot of the URLs are feed URLs, which shouldn't be indexed anyway. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to look at, uh, so we're going to look at GSC clicks and impressions. Now, why might we do that if something is not indexed? Well, it may have been indexed and then dropped from the index. So it's always good to know whether or not it has any 16-month uh, index data. So we're gonna go to performance. We're gonna change this to last 16 months. Then what we're going to do is we're going to export to a G sheet. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go down to pages and we're going to select all of that. I'm going to copy it and we're going to go back to our sheet and then we're just going to call it GSC click data. Okay, and then what we're going to do, I'm going to paste. Now the idea here is exactly the same thing. We're going to go back to our URLs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use an adjusted VLOOKUP. So in the adjusted VLOOKUP, you'll see here, we've just changed the sheet name for where we're going to do the lookup. And again, remember the range. So depending on how many URLs, if you're exporting from Search Console, you will only get a thousand rows. But you can use something like Search Analytics for sheets to bypass the thousand URL limit. So if we're looking at clicks and impressions, well, we, we want the index numbers, okay? So the index number for clicks is going to be two and three for impressions. So we've already set that one and then we're going to set this at number three. And then we're going to double tap on that to go down. Now what we're going to do is select all the columns and <coughs> going to set that. And if you're pedantic like I am, you're going to want to format and then wrap and as with anything, I always like styling things. So then what we're going to do, we're going to press Control and A and we're going to click data and we're going to click create a filter. Now, what I typically like to do is have the original sheet that's not been touched. 
So I will then duplicate the sheet and I will say URLs HTTP 200. Okay. So in this HTTP 200 version, I'm going to click on the filter column and I'm just going to have 200 selected. Or you can do, if there's loads of these exceptions that come up, you can just select filter by condition, text contains, and then you can just put in 200 and hit OK. You'll see that there are now no 301s. So this is the first step, taking that URL export. You might have 100 URLs, you might have 1,000 URLs. But at least when you're doing this, you're filtering down to stuff that you know is active. <coughs> Now, you can then apply filters sequentially. So anything that uh, is, is active but doesn't have internal links, you can then look at the URL. Now, we know that feed URLs are not something that we need to have indexed. I personally do not have any feed URLs indexed. Um, for the purpose of this site being a test site, I haven't bothered to exclude them via robots text. But for the purpose of ignoring feed URLs because they just are not of value anyway, we're going to exclude them. So we're going to do text does not contain and we're going to get rid of those. And you'll see here we're left with just a small volume of URLs. So if something is active, okay, and it returns HTTP 200 and there's no internal links, there's no word count and there's no historic data. Then we have to ask ourselves, well, if there's no internal links, what is the page? Is it uh, an anomaly? Is it a page generated as part of a WordPress plugin? Is it a media URL? Is it something that um, it is orphaned because it, it's not a structural part of the site? So we can see here that this thing says feature, featured underscore item. So it's likely that this is something to do with WooCommerce and uh, a piece of code that refers to a URL that maybe does a pop up and Google's managed to find an index that will crawl it at some point at least. Um, and you can see here we've got a WP content URL for a plugin. Um, you can see we've got paginated results in here. So. <clears throat> Typically, this is a great way to find. So if we see here, we have a URL that was indexed. We have numerous URLs in here that were indexed at some point and then they were dropped. OK, so the idea is going to be if something doesn't have any internal links, it doesn't have any uh, internal data, then we would make sure that this is not something Google would come back and recrawl. Now, even though Google is telling us it's not indexed, Ideally, if we find stuff like this, we don't want Google recrawling it or polling it. So we would set in motion uh, some form of indexing control. Now I can see here that this is a, a pagination item. Okay, so it's very probable that some pagination is indexed and some pagination is not indexed. I would have full index pagination control to eradicate issues like this. So typically I would no index follow a pagination series which would bring this to the point where Google would have to obey the directive if it was to repoll for it. But if there are pages in here that are active and they have internal links and they have data and they're no longer indexed, it's very likely that Google just does not see any value in that page anymore. And that lack of value could be anything from there being another product with a lot of common content to uh, Google just generally not seeing any value in that in that page. So typically with something like that, I would go back, I would adjust the content, I would add a few extra uh, extra internal links to the page, and then I would uh, resubmit for, in the, I'd request indexing after live URL inspection. But this is a great way to drill down, to find URLs that are active, that may have been indexed, and then obviously removed from the index versus stuff that might be anomalies. Anyway, I hope this video helps. Have a great day. My name is Daniel Foley Carter. You can find me on LinkedIn and I run SEO-audits.io where I run lots of SEO webinars and other lots of tips and tricks that you can follow if you need. Have a nice day.